じゃあそろそろ行ってみる何をって決まってるでしょう領域展開どうもどうも、What is up, everybody? Welcome to Positive Juju, the Jujutsu Kaisen podcast, and maybe a little bit more. I am your host, Steady, always at the ready for you guys, all things Jujutsu, and a little bit of Japanese culture, language, and all those good things on the side. So, I just wanted to get this thing underway.、Um, I'm still a novice at this, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit, but I thought it'd be interesting to. Get the conversation going on a very exciting manga right now, and from the perspective of the official translator. So, this podcast will mainly focus on Jujutsu Kaisen and the manga and all the hype surrounding it.、Uh, but the format can change along the way, most likely will. I'd like to hear what you guys are interested in talking about. And、uh, feel free to let me know.、Uh, If you have any questions or comments, and、uh, we can address them here if it fits the bill. Like I said, I just wanted to get this underway, so I can't、uh, exactly guarantee、uh, what the frequency of the podcast will be nor the length, but、uh, kind of we'll you know, test the waters a little bit, get our feet in the pool, see if it's nice and cool, and we can just jump right on in, or if it's A little bit too cold, and we'll take that little ladder and you know, move in slowly. You know what I'm talking about. But for today's episode, I wanted to、uh, just kind of address a couple of things.、Uh, first, I'm going to be talking about the excitement around the series of Jujutsu Kaisen, kind of the success that it's had so far, and the overwhelming recommendations that it's had. And then we'll go into talking about the Character popularity poll, the、uh, one year anniversary popularity online poll that they had, and go into a little bit of details of、uh, the surprises in there. And I do want Positive Juju to be a, more than just Jutsu Kaisen. No one wants to hear me monologuing just on and on about Jutsu Kaisen forever, so I'll throw in a little, you know, kind of little Japanese culture things,、uh, maybe a f- couple of Japanese lessons, but、uh, we'll play with that idea along the way and you let me know what you guys are interested in. I'm more than happy to shed a little light on Japan and manga, anime. Japanese food, all those good things, and I'd love to hear what you guys、uh, think as well. But without further ado, you guys heard the bell, you guys heard Gojo Sensei, we're gonna be late for class. Let's get right to it. So, I think a good place to start would be to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen's、uh, success so far.、Um, it's a series that's only been out for about a year, but a lot of people are very excited about it.、Um, in Japan, it's done very, very well as far as sales numbers are concerned, but just really the recognition that it's getting and how it's being very heavily recommended,、uh, both by professionals as well as readers. So, there's two in specific that I wanted to talk about one professional and one reader based. First one I'm going to talk about is the professional one.、Um, this came out, I think, about maybe about half a year ago. Kind of a well known entertainment magazine in Japan.、Uh, they basically gave a survey to about a thousand, I think it was a thousand actually,、um, bookstore clerks all over Japan. Uh, kind of getting their recommendations on the up and coming, kind of the what, what's going to be the next big thing manga.、Um, I know Actage was、uh, recommended very highly.、Um, one of my big favorites right now is、uh, Goku Shifudo. It's,、uh, I know Viz picked it up. It's the one about the、uh, Yakuza, ex Yakuza gang member who、uh, is now a housewife. It's absolutely hilarious.、Uh, I could go on and on about that manga, but that's neither here nor there.、Um, that was ranked two.、Um, I think Octage was、um, 
about four, I think, and I know Jigokuraku was up there as well, but Jujutsu Kaisen was number one. It was the number one recommended up and coming manga by store clerks in Japan. Obviously, this is just, you know, a small sample size perhaps in kind of the bigger picture, but it does indicate a certain level of hype and um, excitement and what makes it the up and coming manga to look out for. And I'd love to talk more about what they had in the article, um, but th that's really so many things that I can talk about that I'll save it for another time or I'll maybe figure out another medium to get that information to you guys. But don't worry because we'll talk about a couple of those reasons at what makes Jujutsu Kaisen specifically a very appealing series in our next example, which is the Tsutaya Reader Survey. And though for those of you who don't know, uh, Tsutaya is it's a store in Japan that I, I can maybe compare it to Blockbuster, sort of, but it's rental videos are actually very much still a thing in Japan. I don't know how much longer. Uh, I think the time will eventually come that it isn't, but Tsutaya is kind of a big bookstore, kind of miscellaneous goods, but it essentially started out as a rental videos, CDs kind of store but now it's it's kind of expanded and moved with the times but either way it sounds like they surveyed a bunch of their readers i don't know how many specifically but uh again jujutsu kaisen came out on top um i know octage was in there as well gokushifudo again um but jujutsu kaisen number one in two separate surveys both on for professionals as well as readers. So on the website, they have a few reader blurbs. The first one, they, someone mentioned that it's a very kind of a strange atmosphere at first. At the core, it's a Heisei era battle manga, which I completely agree with. I know I, when I first translated, started translating the series, it was, kind of from left field as far as the subject matter is concerned but as I started reading and translating more it became very evident that at the core it is a battle manga there are a lot of the kind of core elements of what make a shonen jump series very good the second little blurb that they had was about the fact that even though you're reading a manga it very much feels like you're watching an anime at times just because of the kind of the way that it's choreographed or the way that it's drawn, the angles, and it's. I was happy to see this because um, people who have read my Twitter know that I have a little segment called Art of Cinemangatography. Um, I was just inspired to come up with that word because cinematography and manga kind of combined feel very appropriate for Jujutsu Kaisen and its battles. Uh, you, It's very dynamic and it's, it's very easy to follow where sometimes battle manga are very just who's got the bigger gun. This one's very much tactical and dynamic in the way that it's drawn, that there's this kind of movement to it almost. Reason number three that they had listed was that even though it's a shonen jump manga, it's very much something that adults can enjoy as well. And I think I remember seeing a graph that showed that there is a population of uh, people that read it that are in their 40s or 50s, uh, 60s even, I think I saw. But yeah, and I think that the subject matter does lend itself to that. So those are the few of the reasons that they had listed. And I understand that this is maybe kind of talking on general terms still a little bit. Um, you can maybe apply that to a few different manga in Shonen Jump right now. Uh, but still, it seems to have kind of this X factor to it. And I have a hard time maybe putting my finger on what that exactly is, but I think uh, it's it's probably something about the the way that the script is written. Um, it gives the characters a very human element, though, even though it is a very kind of fantastical setting, although it is set in the real world. Th there is actually one more uh, bonus blurb that I wanted to say is a very special recommendation is by uh, Sasaki-san at the uh, Viz office. Um, some of you will know him as the former editor-in-chief of Shonen Jump Japan and he was also in Bakuman but uh, very highly respected in the manga community um, and 
there was a podcast a couple weeks ago that they had for Shonen Jump, um, and they had kind of talked into length about Jujutsu Kaisen, and he said something that really kind of made my jaw drop was he thinks that it definitely has the capability and he thinks that it will be one of those big stars of Shonen Jump and something to be on the forefront and maybe even lead it uh, in the coming years. So that was awesome. It was so cool to hear. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Uh, let me know what you think makes these series so special. Um, and it doesn't have to be that it's compared to other manga or like has to be better than anything else. But it's, yeah, what makes it special and what keeps you hooked and reading it week in, week out. The next topic that I want to go into is the character popularity poll. It was an online poll. Um, it was conducted over the course of about a month. And it was a format where you could go and vote for a plethora of characters. I think there were over 80 characters, uh, one each day. So you could vote up to 30 times. And in the end, they had over 163,000 votes. You can find the full results on my Twitter as well as anywhere else on the internet, I guess. Um, but just the, the top ones, number one was Itadori Yuji. Uh, number two was Fushiguro Megumi. And number three was Gojo Sensei. Um, and kind of familiar faces along the way after that. But I want to kind of talk about the, the surprises both maybe a little bit too high i hesitate to say it that way but um i'm surprised to see them that high i guess is a better way of saying it and uh ones that i was surprised to see so low so let's start with the ones that i was surprised to see rank so high um at number seven we had okotsu yuta and i'm not surprised because i'm i'm a big fan but i'm surprised that he got so many votes considering he's actually in volume zero which is kind of the pre-sequel, I guess. <laughs> um, and he's only really revealed in that manga, that volume. So a lot of the readers who read Jujutsu Kaisen on Viz don't even know who this guy is, but he's a second year at uh, Tokyo Jujutsu High. Um, and he is indeed an awesome character and everyone's waiting for him to do his superhero landing when things go sour in a battle. Um, and just kind of come in, swoop in, and do his thing. Um, but I don't want to spoil too much about him. Uh, so, but I was surprised to see him at number seven, considering a lot of people don't even know really who he is, but I guess a lot of people are diehard fans of him. And the next one at number 13, I'm just genuinely surprised to see her that high. Uh, I do like the character, I guess, but I have no idea what she's doing so high is Takada-chan. The uh, the tall idol that Todo loves. Um, I guess a lot of people just liked her little blurb in uh, Aoi's kind of little dream sequence thing, or she's just, you know, an idol, so she gets votes that way, I guess. Um, but at number 26, we have, and I guess number 26 isn't like too, too high, but it's still pretty high considering the character is... Uh, Ino Takuma. A lot of you won't even know who this guy is just hearing the name. Um, but he's Nanami's kind of little apprentice dude that has the beanie on his head. Uh, he showed up briefly in the Mahito arc. Um, so, but nothing, he was literally in the manga for about four frames, had a few lines. We don't even know what his power is. I think we know that he is of, I think, uh, yeah, he's grade two sorcerer because he, uh, there is that little back and forth between him and Nanami talking about how Nanami will recommend it, uh, recommend him for grade one if he does what he tells him to. 
But yeah, he got a lot of votes too. Uh, I was surprised. But let's go ahead and move on to the characters that I was surprised to see a little low. Um, at number 25, we have Mahito. And I, to be me personally, I think that's just about right. But I know there's a lot of diehard Mahito fans who, uh, that don't agree with this at all. But number 25 sounds about right. If you ask me, maybe an unpopular opinion, but what are you going to do? He's at number 25. Um, the next two I actually want to just put together is uh, number 37 and number 40, uh, respectively, is the Kyoto High and the Tokyo High principles. Uh, I guess the, the Kyoto High principle, he didn't really show much yet so i guess yeah number 37 is about right but his design is just so cool uh his little zz top kind of thing going on uh can't wait to see more from him um but yaga sensei from tokyo high you know he has his little curse infused puppets going on his dolls uh I guess, yeah, he hasn't really shown too much yet, too, but he's had some pretty cool one-liners, and his banter is pretty cool, so I was surprised to see him at number 40. At number 54, I guess it's not a surprise, but uh, we have Hakari, and a lot of you guys won't even know who the hell I'm talking about, but Hakari is the third year at Tokyo High, and he's not at the school right now, suspended, uh for unknown reasons but he's got to be pretty badass because Gojo even mentions him when he's talking about oh the next generation of you know special grade uh sorcerers and he mentions uh Itadori and like Todo and uh Okotsu and he even puts Hakari in that category and Hakari is someone that I want to talk more about in terms of theories and stuff uh and what his powers are. I have a couple of ideas what he might be based on his name, but we'll save that for another time. Make sure you guys remind me. And at number 75, really scraping the bottom, uh, I think he was five or six spots from the bottom, is uh, Zenin Naobito. We saw him in the flashback uh, of Maki and Mai. He's at that time was the head of the Zenin family and we only saw him very briefly and he was very dismissive of Maki and laughing in her face and all that so maybe that's why he's not popular because Maki's awesome and you don't do her like that right but he's gonna be someone to look out for as well he's a head of the Zenin family so that'll be awesome but he was at number 75 but just a little kind of overview of what the character popularity poll was. It was awesome to see the success, uh, a lot of votes, and it was cool to see where the characters are kind of placed and where their popularity is. So I thought maybe it'd be fun to do a little Japanese lesson each podcast. Uh, we'll see what the reception is, and if it uh, people are interested in such a thing, we'll keep on doing it. But since it is a Jujutsu Kaisen podcast, I thought it'd be fun to take a look at uh, a line of dialogue, or maybe a couple lines of dialogue from the manga in Japanese, and see how it was translated into English. Nothing too extensive, just maybe uh, something that for those of you who are learning some Japanese might be able to kind of put in your repertoire. So let me go ahead and read this line in Japanese and see if you can actually recognize where it's from. So that was my uh, old man voice just in case uh, you were wondering why I sounded so weird. Um, so it is none other than uh, Itadori Yuji's grandfather in chapter one. It was translated into, you're a strong kid, 
so help people. The kara in tsuyoi kara, tsuyoi kara is because you're strong. So this is、uh, something that you can actually apply to quite a lot of terms in Japanese. Like you can say atsui kara because it's hot. Atsui kara soto ni detakunai. Like because it's hot, I don't want to go outside. Or toi kara ikitakunai. Uh, because it's far, I don't want to go. And the second part,、uh, hito o taskero. Obviously, this is a huge kind of theme in what Itadori Yuji's character is,、uh, so I wanted to bring this one up.、Uh, hito o taskero is translated into help people. Taskero, that lo part, is something that can be applied to, it's, it's kind of an assertive request.、Um, like you can. Oftentimes, you'll hear in manga, like,、uh, or anime, I guess I should say, Koko ni iro. Omae wa koko ni iro. You stay here. I think actually Megumi says it、um, not too long after this when they go to the school to take out that curse. So, just something short, real quick,、uh, something fun to do. I don't want to go into too much detail About the grammar and the technicalities, nor am I really the best person to teach that kind of stuff, to be honest.、Uh, I just didn't grow up learning Japanese that way. However, I do know the kind of stuff that is often used in Japanese conversation in reality, not just textbook Japanese, right? So I wanted to kind of sh- shed a little bit of light on Japanese that is a little bit more practical and sort of in a fun way. So, we are nearing the end of our episode today. Positive Juju episode one. Like I said,、uh, I just wanted to get this thing kind of underway. It's a series that is kind of underexposed, in my opinion. Not underrated, because anyone who reads it, I think, more or less enjoys the series. But as the manga comes out at the end of the year, and、uh, fingers crossed, an anime. Probably next year. We'll, we'll get into that topic another time. I wanted to kind of get ahead of the curve, so to speak,、uh, for all those really hardcore Jutsu fans out there. There's really not a podcast like this yet so far. And I hope you like the kind of style that I went for. You know, the music and just kind of the way that it flowed. And、uh, in my head, I was just kind of picturing almost a, especially with the intro, just kind of. Going to Jujutsu High and what the kind of sounds you might hear there. And、um, the music is v- very much my personal taste, so I don't know if you'd hear kind of that jazzy music at Jujutsu High, but maybe you do, I don't know.、Um, either way, just kind of that atmosphere.、Um, so I hope you guys like that style. And anyone who does want to、uh, ask questions or、uh, leave some comments. Answer some of the questions that I had today.、Uh, you're more than welcome to contact me at、uh, my Twitter, which is at ReadySteady20. ReadySteady, as in the words R E A D Y S T E A D Y, and 20 as 20. What kind of stuff are you interested in talking about here? Are chapter reviews something, whether it be little or a lot, or Can find that kind of stuff elsewhere, or do you want to kind of keep it the way that it was today, as far as kind of the more peripheral stuff, talking about maybe more theory kind of oriented stuff, news? I'll definitely also try to kind of mix things up and keep things interesting along the way as well. Maybe get some guests on the show to do、uh, an interview or two. Uh, do some QA along the way. That's definitely also why I want to hear what you guys have to say as well.、Uh, we can go about that as well. And to be honest,、uh, I'd like to maybe start doing some、uh, giveaways too along the way.、Uh, definitely as the new manga comes out,、um, new merchandise comes out, I'm more than happy to do so. I'm not ashamed to admit if that's something that kind of gets the buzz going a little bit more, hey, I'll do it. 
But as far as next week is concerned, there's uh, something that I've been meaning to talk uh, for a while now, uh, even on my Twitter, but it's just kind of hard as far as the format is concerned. Um, but maybe this is the right place to do so, is talk about uh, Megumi's powers, um, especially kind of the hints that we've had along the way. Uh, I have a theory on as to what the extent of his power is and what form it might take. But really, uh, thank you so much for listening today. Thank you to the great fans that have been supporting kind of the Jujutsu cause, so to speak, and pushing the agenda on uh, places like Twitter, YouTube. Uh, you know who you are. Um, and I really just want to say thank you again. We are the OGs. When the graphic novels start coming out, when the anime comes out, and when Jujutsu Kaisen becomes a name recognizable all over the world, and when I finally start seeing some artwork and cosplay and merch and stuff at uh, Comic Cons, we'll know that we're the OGs. And we were there from the start, and no one can take that from us. So keep spreading that positive juju, and we'll see you next time. Mata yoroshiku! Otsukare-sama-san! <laughs>